Greetings one and all, and welcome to a brand new Harry Yak playthrough. This is a game that you probably won't have played unless you live in Japan, because it was released on the Japan-only Satellaview system. I'll go into more detail about this later on, but for now, here's a few basic facts. The Satellaview was an early precursor to modern online gaming. However, since it was released in the 90s and the internet had yet to take off at this point, games were broadcast via satellite. That's right, the system was a kind of modem, and each game was broadcast much like a television program at certain times during the week. The Legend of Zelda The Ancient Stone Tablets, for example, had four episodes, and each was one hour long. Today, we're going to focus on the first chapter, and the resultant hilarity, or non-hilarity as the case may be, that will ensue. For example, me trying to kill that old beardy bloke there with a pot, which has never worked, so I don't know why I thought it would work in this particular version of the game. But there again, Ancient Stone Tablets does introduce some new and tweaked gameplay elements from Link to the Past and we shall run into those pretty soon. Here we have the first furry fountain of the game, and my very first screw up. As you can see there, you are given a few items to start off with, including a bottle with a golden bee, which I am just about to release now. Now this protects you while you do not have a sword or shield, <laughs> but I accidentally caught it again. And the thing tries to fly off, but no dice boy, you've got to help me. And there you go, I collected two items on the same swing. I don't recall ever doing that before. Anyway, enough buggage for now, because we'll be encountering a lot more glitches as we progress through the game. And look, we've already played two minutes! The eagle-eyed amongst you will have noticed that we started on six minutes past one on the in-game timer there. Those opening six minutes were used to download the game data to the user's Famicom system, and also for intro cutscenes. I'm sure that if you did a bit of a search for those, you'd be able to find them quite easily, but for now, we're going to try and be a bit more succinct. I guess this tile was put here for the benefit of people who had never played Zelda before, because it's pretty blooming obvious. Golden Bee? Sick'em! Yes, that's fantastic, isn't it? You've got a henchman to do all the dirty work for you. Or should that be a hench B? It's a good job the game does give you a golden B, because you'd be pretty screwed right up until the point you got your sword and shield, which you don't get at the same time in this game. But I don't want to spoil things too much for you, so I'll let the game explain that. Now might be as good a time as any to explain what those subtitles at the bottom of the screen are all about. Well, basically, you've got a running commentary from this bloke named Agina, the beardy bloke that we encountered when we woke up. And now we have a seer who's entered the conversation. And he has just sent a couple of furries for us. But never mind that, because now we have the sword! and we no longer need the bee. Screw you, bee! Now, here's a slightly different gameplay mechanic. Agena tells us there that we must check the left-hand wall. As you can see, or hear, it makes a different noise from the rest of the room. In Link to the Past, it was slightly more obvious which walls that you could bomb, as we just get the bombs there. But here, there's no indication, and you're expected to do that test 
the sword test or look at the map to find out for yourself. Which results in a lot of looking up the map in my video here. For that, I apologise, but I want to try and get as many secrets as I can into this video. Yes, it's all for the sake of you, the viewer. I've screwed up with the furries again, haven't I? And I almost used that. Jeez. Well, it's not as if we would have needed it, because this dungeon is pretty simple. After all, it is the first in the game. And here are 40 rupees! <laughs> We're just checking under these pots here, which is a pretty important thing to do, because if you don't, you may well miss a secret or a key. And in here, guess what? That's correct, more rupees. Yes, all the hidden rooms in the dungeons contain rupees, and are as such not necessary for game completion, however, they do add to your score. We already have 131 rupees, and we've only been playing 6 minutes. Now, generally, the link to the past was a bit more stingy on the rupees, but this game is a lot more liberal. As we just pick up the first level shield. Yay! No secrets up here, I hope. Nope, just double check with the map again. More tentacle monsters and a chest, which contains a compass. It's kind of pointless knowing the location of the boss, especially in these early dungeons when it's pretty obvious. Oh look! Another bombable wall! Just gotta check this wall down here, and head through here for some more rupees. Going back to what I was saying earlier about the subtitles, they are a big part of the Satella view. Certain games were broadcast with voiceovers and custom music, which you don't hear in this ROM hack. And obviously, the subtitles are an English version of what the Japanese people were saying in the voiceover. It can be a little bit off-putting, but I think it's pretty innovative. I don't know about you. We now have 222 rupees exactly, so our character will probably be hopping around on one leg as he kills the monsters. A nice little reference for all you cricket fans out there. Wait for it. Die! Yes, a nice crop of rupees there. And, oh, oh yes. I usually have quite a bit of trouble against those skeletons, but on this occasion, I was quite lucky. Let's head downstairs. And there is the big chest, but we cannot access it yet. We can, however, access this secret room, which I remember from a previous playthrough. Saves me from having to look at the map yet again. As you can see, I'm getting a bit lazy by now. It is worth paying attention to those subtitles, because they notify you of important game events. The Satellaview makes use of timed events, and there are a lot of them. For example, on 12 minutes, some furries might appear, or you might get the aid of the Bombos Medallion. The subtitles let you know when this stuff is going to happen, which is usually at a completely inopportune moment. See there, you will now certainly receive rupees for any slain monsters, which means if you kill any enemies, you will definitely get a rupee drop. And as the bloke says, it won't last long. I think you only get five minutes of this luxury. There's plenty more of these, and I'll make note of them when they crop up. Well, I hope this first ten minutes has been informative and entertaining, even though I haven't made many jokes, and as I just get killed by that flower thing. What are those things? 
Spledge of sploggers, and we've got the big key. I'm making up words now. Hmm, that Spledge of Splogger seems to be trapped in the stairs. Oh, it's coming for me! Jeez. Big chest time, but first, this skeleton will die. Hey, how do you hit me? I'll make you jump for your life. And he's dead. Man, these pots are awfully generous, aren't they, with the refills? As we get the bow. It can shoot arrows, but only until you run out. I love those additions from Link to the Past. Speaking of Link to the Past, you could say that this is a watered down version of that game. The Satellaview broadcasts were split into four one hour slots, so gameplay time is a maximum of four hours, and not even that if you include the cutscenes in that. So I guess the dungeons would have to be a lot shorter and a lot simpler to navigate. But this is only the first dungeon, so I guess we shouldn't use this as an indicator of what's to come. Cheers for the key! And it looks like we're almost at the boss. Just a few of these one-eyed freaks to kill yet! Die, fool! <laughs> and he's also stuck on a pot. My goodness. A ten-year-old kid can pick those up with no problem whatsoever. Yet, yeah, some great big monster has trouble even getting past them. It's almost as if it's a brick wall to them. Come on, boy. Ah, no! <sighs> I take it all back about the pots. There you go. Now, here's another secret room. Kill two birds with one stone. And shoot him in the eye. If we want to see him cry. One-eyed freaks must die. And I think that's a song from Grand Theft Auto 2, if I remember correctly. I have no idea why I remembered that just now. But let's move on. My goodness, they're having another conversation. Oh, the northern magic shop? Yeah, the one north of the temple. It's like Markham and Wise, isn't it? <laughs> we just got the Pegasus boots, which I demonstrated. And it's pretty important that you get them early on in the game. Because speed, as you can imagine, with a timed game, is pretty essential. And this bloke gives us some more arrows, but we've already got infinite arrows. And that's because we are currently in the window that offers you free infinite arrows. I guess they put that in to make it a bit easier against the big boss who we are about to face. Oh, I wonder who they could be. It's the Armos Knights. Ooh. And poof. Yes, it's extremely satisfying when they get vanquished. Only four more to go now. And it doesn't matter about me wasting these arrows, so I'll just throw them against the wall. No, no, calm down. There's no need to go into a huge, whoa, a huge rage just because your friends are dead. And that's it. The first dungeon is complete. Hmm, what's this? Is it a curtain of eggs? Well, considering this is Zelda, probably not. Aha! It is a strange stone tablet. Does this stone tablet have some kind of significance? Well, I'll tell you now. We don't find out in this part, and it's probably only in the fourth chapter that we have any sort of clue as to what the tablets do. And never mind that for now, because remember, we are against the clock, and time is of the essence, you stupid Octorok! Kill you for that. It's time to head back to Sahasrala's house. Oh, sorry, Agina's house. Can't get used to that. He had such a bit part role in Link to the Past. Oh, looky here! The fortune teller! Yes, it's Eric and Ernie themselves. We'll need the flippers to continue our quest. So, I guess that's the next thing that we're gonna do. You useless fool. 
You never have anything of interest to say. Can I destroy you with my newly found sword? Evidently not. There's a brick wall around him. Ooh, a thick fog appeared. Master Ragnar, the arrows, the arrows. And they are indestructible. No! In here, we have... Red Rupee? Red Rupee. Red Rupee. And Red Ru Oh, a piece of heart! Yes! A uh, first. Well, you two, I'd love to stay and watch your Christmas show, but I have to go and do... things. Oh look, they weren't lying about the fog. It is pretty thick, isn't it? That's one of the fantastic elements of this game. Real-time weather events. And they do have some sort of bearing on gameplay, particularly the rain, which we'll see in a few minutes' time. We'll just do a bit of exploring before we head off to King Zora. First of all, let's head to the right with our newly found Pegasus power. Now, notice this piece of heart. Can you guess how we get it? That's right, we use the wall jump. And if you said bomb jump, you would have been half right, but we don't want to go losing hearts. It's still too early, come back later. This is a game, and you can only play it from, I think, the 44th minute? We'll do that in due course, but for now, we have stuff to find! As I try and remember where the heck to go next. Down here, we have a couple of things. There's a bombable wall, which we'll leave for now. And here is an opening. But oh no! The rain has finally started to fall, so let's take shelter. In this furry cave! But we're not too interested in those. We're interested in what's behind this. And it's four more chests. Red rupee. Red rupee. Red rupee. And piece of heart. Piece of red rupee. Ah! It lulled me into a false sense of security. Now I mention the different gameplay mechanics for when it's raining. For example, this. You cannot use bombs, they fizzle out. A fact that I shortly forget, even though I've just demonstrated it. Additionally, there are these strange fishmen that have appeared. Yes, these Zoras are far more powerful than in Link to the Past, and you're only using a level 1 sword here, remember. Oh, looky! A secret place. Rupees, perhaps? Or even better, a piece of art? Nah, 100 rupees. Alright, you found 100 rupees! Splendid. This is pleasant. Nice mix of cross-continental accents there. To reflect the two different people evidently having a conversation in that message. Weird. Oh no, not you! You think I'm gonna buy something? You must be a complete idiot! He says he gets so few customers? Well, with those prices, I'm not surprised. Well, 10 rupees for 10 arrows is pretty cheap. Oh, getting killed by this blasted Zora! I hate that little corner. I think I get cheesed in it a couple of times in this video. Aha! Another real-time event is occurring, as indicated by the seer. Oh, get out of my way! Look at him stuck at the other side of that. You can't catch me, ha! Huh? A piece of art! Yes! Yeah, the fortune teller says that King Zara has become docile from the rain, and as such, he has reduced the price of his flippers from 300 rupees as I pointlessly try to use my bomb against these Egypts. If I can find King Zora within the next 10 minutes, I get the half price discount on the fantastic flippers, which are necessary for game progression. 
we have until the 35th minute to do that. Oh, you idiots! Get out of it! You might have noticed that I've already taken quite a few hits from those Zaras, yet for some reason, I've only lost one and a half hearts up to this point. That's because this game employs a numerical life meter, yet it chooses to visualize it in hertz. I suppose it does look a bit better. It's a bit of differentiation from the magic meter. Although they are different colors, so I guess you'd be a bit of an idiot to get them mixed up. I don't think I want to talk to these fools. That's actually the rental shop. You can rent out particular items for a short amount of time and do stuff with them. Oh, come on, that wasn't fair. Oh, jeez, these cheap shots coming in thick and fast here. And they're trying to go down that hole, but they cannot. It's an impossibility. Hey! Well, at least I picked up four bombs. What's behind this bombable wall? A man who's evidently living here. I don't know how he eats or drinks. Well, maybe he came down here to die, and that's why he's given me his life savings. What? Is it still raining? Well, take a quick look out of the window. I guess it was reminding you that bombs still can't be used. Thankfully, Zora's domain is a lot simpler to navigate because it's a lot shorter. And here he is. The big fish man himself, King Zora. Well, what do you want of me? He's a lot more succinct this time around. And of course I want the flippers, you fool. Why would I wake you from your slumber? You'd probably eat me if I didn't. Anyway, cheers for the flippers. At a cut price, 150 rupees. <laughs> and a random appearance of one of the medallions there. I hope it killed all those Zoras. Well, of course it didn't. That would be making things far too easy, wouldn't it? Only a couple of minutes now until it stops raining. Oh no, a glitch monster! Kill it, quick! It seems to be stuck on land. And the glitch monster is dead! Oh, that's quite scary, that. Scarier than those actual Zoras. Up here, we have... The second dungeon! <laughs> Agina and the fortune teller are trying to get us to go to the rental shop again. But I don't know what happened to the telepathy powers because I'm trying to raid a dungeon right now. And that's a pretty obvious puzzle. Just in case you didn't know how to do it, it tells you. Once again, that's just in case you never played Link to the Past. Which, incidentally, they did actually release on the Satellaview system a couple of years later. It's exactly the same, except you can now play as your avatar on the Satellaview system. Isn't that awesome? It's an interesting point, actually, because the kid you're playing in this game, although he looks like Link, save for the terrible turned-back baseball cap, it isn't Link. He's you. It's your avatar on the Satellaview system. If you remember back to the beginning of the game, you could select to be a boy or a girl. And this sprite represents the boy, as you probably will have noticed by now. However, on this ROM hack, you can only choose to be a boy. And the reason for this is probably when they retrieve the data to make the hack, from the Satellaview memory cards. They only had data for a boy. Please don't quote me on that, I'm only speculating. I'm not some sort of great expert on Satellaview systems or anything like that. But you can go and check it out online and do the research that I never did. Yeah, I'm gonna have to look that up for you in between parts, aren't I? I apologize for that lack of research. Oh yes, take that, Skellingtons! Oh, I hate those things. And of course, 
we have to check every single wall in the dungeon. There are a few less secret areas in this particular dungeon, so hopefully it'll go by a bit quicker. Just pick up that heart there, even though it's completely pointless, because I am full on hearts. And he's dead. At least it gives you the courtesy of an arrow refill as we get lost again. Actually, it's pretty much impossible to get lost in these dungeons, especially considering they are so small. And some more inaccuracy on these skeletons. Dear oh dear, there's going to be more arrows in the wall than there are in the actual enemies. Part 1 is quite fun though, it's a simple challenge and it's pretty much impossible to fail, especially if you've already played a Legend of Zelda game before, particularly A Link to the Past. I couldn't tell you if all the parts were like this yet because I haven't played them, but you will find out in the coming weeks. Another quite simple challenge though, it's more of a time wasting challenge than anything, which is quite a big enemy in a town game, I'd say. Only two floors to this dungeon, and you could easily do it without the map, but if you want to get all the secrets, then it's imperative to keep checking. For example, there is a bombable wall here. Let's take a look what's inside, shall we? Slam into the other wall while we're waiting. Oh my goodness, serpent shooters! I wonder if I can loot this place and get out before they shoot. Well, at least they never got me. <laughs> Even when you take your time looking for the secrets and things like that, you still have plenty of time to do all the tasks set in Chapter 1. I guess they had to make the first part easy so as to rope people in, so they would come back for the second, third and fourth weeks. And. Well, I tell you, it certainly got me hooked. And they have to tell us that the fog has cleared, even though it has no real relevance at the moment. And notice how it mentions the ocarina there. So that's interesting to note that it's no longer the flute. Somewhere in between Link to the Past and this game, they changed the name to the ocarina. Or perhaps it was mistranslated from the original Japanese game. Or maybe they just wanted to make it a slightly different item with the same sprite. I don't know, but for whatever reason, it's the ocarina now. Ooh, this must be something important. Kill idiot, get out of it. Oh, it wasn't. It was absolutely pointless. 20 rupees? I don't know how many points you get for that, but was it really worth getting hit twice for? And secret room! Let me guess. Rupees! Oh joy. Big key door! So we're getting a bit closer to the boss now. Actually, we're still miles away. And looky here! A simple puzzle! I wonder how to solve this. Could it have something to do with the boomerang? Yes, it does. And once again, because this is the first chapter, just in case you get stuck, it tells you what to do. Aha! I sense something hidden here! And I'm correct! A bombable wall. And go! Oh look, another thief. And this bloke is evidently living in this dungeon behind a sealed wall. Once again, you have to wonder how they sustain themselves. Do they lick the condensation from the stone walls? You blasted bats! I really hate those bats. How's that one got over there? My. I swear I got hit more by these blasted bats than the dungeon boss. Get out of it. Swish them away with my sword. Some more rupees? 
And, yes, 20 of them. Ah, a mysterious force gathers. And then it counts down. This can only mean one thing. More medallion power. Oh, you skellies are for it now. Ha ha ha, take this. Boom. And it takes forever, but at least they are dead. Oh, and look, one of them has dropped a key. I really hope that does not fade away. I guess we have to work our way around to get it. Ugh, what a cannon and ball on about now. It must mean something. Perhaps the land of Hyrule is granting the strange power to the youth. Yes, I find that interesting how they keep calling you a youth. I mean, in Britain, a youth is a bad thing, or at least it's portrayed as a bad thing in the media. Yes, indeed, the term youth is often used derogatorily, if that's even a word. It probably isn't the way that I said it, but... Moving on. Aha! The key did not disappear. Oh, joy of joys! We can now progress. But oh no, it's gone dark again! Thankfully, we're not that far from the boss now! Only a couple more rooms to go, and a secret one. Hmm, what's in here? Aha! Some more rupees. Easily collected, thanks to the Pegasus Boots and a brand new gameplay mechanic, which allows you to change directions whilst you are running. And I love that. Makes things much easier. And from now on, when I play Link to the Past, I'm gonna wish that it had that function. Pick up the blasted pot, fool! We're gonna need all our courage for this particular battle, which is, no doubt, gonna be the hardest we've ever seen. Actually, it's not that hard, especially with the Pegasus boots, even though I get hit twice or three times in this. It is possible to do it without getting hit. I know this because in my preparatory playthroughs, I did just that, and this was the first time that I actually took a hit from this Egypt. Another heart container, and another stone tablet. We now have two. Excellent. Put it on the shelf next to the other one, will ya? Ah, see what's appeared here. A bonus piece of heart. And we've got another heart container. That's two within the space of what? Ten seconds? Things are really picking up now. Well, believe it or not, that's all the obligatory tasks completed for this chapter. As I just try and... Yeah! Blasted buzz blobs. Haha, <laughs> I remembered the name of that particular enemy. Can't be bothered talking to you. So, we shall bomb this place. I really hope it's a heart piece. Oh, what are you doing? Get out of the way! Ah, full of magic! Excellent! And another puzzle. Simpler than Pokemon. And, indeed, a piece of heart. Well, I think we deserve that after completing that difficult task. Oh! Oh, all right then, I'll speak to you. The Riverside Rental Shop. Oh, all right then. I'll have a look at what you have. Are you not going to show me in? Ah, well, take this sign. Get out of the way, I'm trying to get in. Do you want me to buy something from here or not? Hello there. Talk to me. Oh, you've got to go around the desk. That doesn't generally happen in real life. Imagine if you went behind the counter at Tesco's. They wouldn't be very pleased at all, would they? But, we've got the shovel. And, we have a digging task. If we just take a quick look at the map, we can see that X marks the spot. Ha ha! So let's go! And avoid the buzz blob, yeah!
Right, I know it's somewhere around here. I'm nearly there, as we can see from the map. And <laughs> there it is. First time's a charm. Just to prove that there are other things here, here is a selection of rupees. You can actually dig anywhere, and there are quite a lot of treasures to be found. Just not beneath those trees. Generally, you don't want to go wasting your time looking for rupees, though, when you've got stuff to do. It's the witch from Link to the Past. Looks as though you have to find her mushroom. And I'll bet you that it's in the Lost Woods. You may have noticed she talks about her new medicine. Well, we're just about to get an explanation of what that is. For a demonstration, you'll have to tune in in a later part. Because guess what? I forgot to buy some. It's only made once per day, and that's it. You've missed your chance. Never mind. There are three more days to go. Also note the fact that it's pretty cheap, and it comes in a very fetching yellow hue, which makes it look like honey. Forget that though, because it's gone. We've missed our chance, as I said. However, there is still plenty of stuff to do around here. For example, this bombable wall, which we missed earlier. Or rather, we never got the chance earlier, because we were in a hurry. And it's a piece of heart! Just for reference, if you're using this as a walkthrough, which I don't advise, we missed exactly one heart piece in this video. I'll have to go and get it in a later part, I'm afraid. Aha! More stuff we missed earlier! I think I went in here, though. What a waste of time. Quick, quick, quick! We are, of course, against the clock here, if you remember correctly. As if it wasn't obvious enough by the fact there is a timer in the top corner. Cur to bet that it's some more cash? Well, you're correct. Despite the fact that we've done all the obligatory things in this video, there are still one or two fascinating things to see. Down here, for example, we should find that Princess Zelda is in great peril! Oh no! <laughs> Hello there! You've got the time to stop and chat? I'll blow these guys up. Just take... Take this last guy out. Hey! You're gonna die for that fool! Do not believe it! That single Octorok! Aye! Anyway, that's the end of the game. Bye! Now, nah, only joking, we have to take her back to the castle first. Do we have time for some exploration? I hope so, because here's another bombable wall. Oh, that's lovely, isn't it? The fact she copies everything you do, even when you slam into a wall. <laughs> and she doesn't let us go in there. Obviously, there might be more Octoroks that might take her hostage. Anyway, this is around about the time when we find out that we are a great hero and we must save the world from monsters and things like that. But we kind of found that out from the first 44 minutes of the game. It is, however, nice to see some story elements back. Hey, she can run as fast as me. She must have her own pair of the Pegasus shoes. She talks a bit about Link here, so... I wonder if she got them from him. Very generous person he is. He's out of the country, apparently, so maybe he's looking for masks or something. Being chased by monsters, eh? Why does this stuff always happen? She should get a new hobby like Game Boy Advance or something. Were those out yet? I think we were still on Game Boy Color, weren't we? 95, 96? Ah, uh, same difference. Same old rehash stuff. Same old Zelda games for a different console. Right, someone take a screenshot of that. 
you received 300 rupees for saving someone's life. And Bert and Derny at the bottom there, still discussing something that happened 10 minutes ago. I guess telepathy technology still hasn't advanced to such an extent that we can eradicate delay. Time to head back down here, to the cave that the demanding Zelda would not let us in. Ooh, the music stopped. At least we get to hear the fantastic fanfares for the rupees. You can hear the bass drum parts, the du -du dun which you'd be forgiven for thinking wasn't part of the fanfare. Duh, whoever uses that staircase? The only reason it is there is for me to smash into it with startling regularity. Here is the weekly sideshow, and this particular game is a pot smashing game, which I cannot do. And you're about to see me fail in spectacular fashion. You get 15 seconds to smash these pots with the hammer, and you're not supposed to hit these skulls as I'm doing here. What you're supposed to do is run back and forth with the Pegasus boots to smash the different pots on each side. But I control this thing like I'm driving a tank. In other words, I suck. Yes, this one requires a bit of practice, but considering the Satellaview broadcasts only came along once or twice a week, you wouldn't have had the luxury of attempting it over and over again unless you wanted to waste your time. Obviously this isn't much of a problem on the emulated version, but still, why would you want to waste your time doing this? I suppose it might be fun if you get into it, but... That's enough for today, I think. It's time to go home, small child. He says come back when you want to feel refreshed, but that's the last thing that I felt. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just frustrated that I can't do it. Or rather, I'm too lazy to practice. What are we going in here for? We've already been in here. Ooh, something I forgot to mention. It seems we currently have full life, as in we've got, I think it's 20 heart containers. I guess this was inserted just in case you hadn't beaten the second boss yet, but it's all so simple the more likely option is that you are having too much fun messing around. And I know I do. This life refill only lasts five minutes, so make the most of it. Hello. What have we here? Some sort of strange creature. Kill it! It's indestructible, no! Oh, it's a friend. This mole type thing appears randomly throughout the world, and once you've talked to him, he disappears into the ground. Well, he is a mole after all. Oh, slow down! And you have to find where he has buried the treasure. Yes, more buried treasure. This game seems to be obsessed with it, and here he is. It's a novel little addition to the game, because it gives you something else to do once you've retrieved the two stone tablets. And best of all, you get to see the splendid, pleasant message again, which is always nice. Really racking up the points on our score now. Actually, I don't believe I've mentioned score up until now. You do have it in this game. It appears at the end of each weekly chapter. It's a rather complicated system. You get points based on speed, opening chests, rupees, things like that, and you'll find out more about that at the end of the video. Although no doubt my overall score is pretty terrible because I'm slowing down to show you things here you'll probably be able to beat it easily, and by all means do. Well, all the major events are now over, and it's time to have some fun. Might as well make the most 
of this 100% rupee drop bonus. Hey, 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 five rupees! Ha <laughs> ha I hope you don't mind me double speeding through this while I'm just running around like a madman here. Doodly doo doo. It's like Benny Hill, isn't it? Hmm. Hello, you two. Fancy a sword to the face? Ha <laughs> ha! Take that. Well, that's not why we're up here. Because I just remembered we forgot one secret place. And here it is. Hello again, you two. Hee <laughs> hee! Hmm. Keep this a secret from everyone. Okay! I will! You probably won't mind if I loot your treasure chests either. Look at him. He's not even looking at me. He's just stirring out of the door. He's probably considering how he's gonna fill it in again. I hope he has some polyfiller. Ah, it's so much fun taunting these statues. You can't get me! Idiots can't climb down stairs, they're like reverse Daleks. And that really is everything. All that's left to do is to enter this shop and blow the heck out of it. Hello you. Would you like a bomb to the face? And another. And oh, what's the point? Either the residents of this town are indestructible, or those bombs can tell the difference between friends and enemies. Oh, look at this guy cheesing me, goodness me. Well, the heart containers are just about to return to normal, and there you go. As the seer so helpfully points out for us. We're back to double speed now, while I run around like a blimming idiot. So, I suppose I'd better do my closing gambit. I could go back to that pot smashing game. I mean, I have enough time, but I'm so bad at it, I don't want to put you through all that. But this first week has done a great job of roping me in. If I had a Satella view, I'd certainly tune in again. Even if I couldn't understand Japanese. Let's take a quick look to see if we can enter the castle now. What are you doing here? He finds it hard to believe. Oh really? I ought to smash your head off. Blow you up. Take that! And that! They are very ageist in this game, aren't they? I mean, I know in the real world there are laws against discrimination towards old people, but is there a similar law for young people? Evidently not in Hyrule. But anyway, who cares? Because I have a sword and a shield and I'm badass! Later today, I will go and fry ants on the pavement using a magnifying glass. And I think next week, I'm going to save the world. Yes, that's what I'm going to do. Well, the 56 minutes are almost up. I'm not entirely sure what the remaining 4 minutes are dedicated to. Though, some of that will no doubt be taken up by cutscenes. I'm going to leave that in at the end of the video, so you can watch it to your heart's content. However, we're just going to take a quick look at the goals I have and haven't achieved for today. As you can see, I missed one heart piece. I think I mentioned that, but apart from that, we've got everything. And you can access this screen at any time by hitting start and pressing R. It's a fantastic addition, I think. Oh, and here's the aforementioned cutscene. Geez, yellow text, getting a flashback to urinating tree here. Please, don't give up. Yes, tune in again next week, or we're sending round the bailiffs to confiscate your Satella view. And there he goes again, referring to me as a youth, and the fact that I've collected some tablets. <sighs> Typical media sensationalism.
In the next episode, we shall be rescuing the swordsmith, collecting two more stone tablets, and a bunch more hurt containers. I bet you can't wait. Also, I'll discuss the issue of emulation a little bit more, in particular for this game, because it's a bit of a grey area and it probably deserves a bit more development.